Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Are there any grateful saints in the house today? Well, we're just excited. Amen. We're excited again to be in the Lord's house and in the midst of uh, such an awesome, awesome experience. Uh, we not only honor the Lord uh, as we do all the time, but we're so thankful uh, for our masters, master of uh, ceremony, master of order. Again, Brother Ryan Campbell, thank you for uh, navigating us to this point uh, in worship. Amen. And Sister Callan, you bless me. Amen. Wow. So grateful that we're recording up there with the IT ministry. You blessed me. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, take that snippet and that clip it of the occasion and be able to put it on the monitors and hear it for many, many seasons, many seasons to come. It was one of those uh, moment uh, in time occasions amen so listen i'm so excited to have all of you guys are here man i'm i'm telling you by now you guys ought to know how excited i am uh so i'm gonna say some things and then i'll get out of your way uh we are just privileged to have uh with us two individuals uh our very own i guess Samus. she's coming up uh in just a second uh she's going to bless us like always and uh, create an atmosphere uh, like always, those of you who missed Wednesday night, perhaps you viewed us. If you wasn't here, uh, it's just good to have, come on, TT back in the house. Come on, let's thank God for our very own Tanisha Toussaint Gibbs. Amen. Her and her lovely husband, uh, Elder Gibbs, preached us uh, on Wednesday night, man, taught such a powerful lesson on the love affair. Matthew 16 and 18 blessed us in a tremendous way. It's just good to have our family come back home. Amen. 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 Our first scribe, our first reader. Amen. Our fourth elder in the 18 years that we've been here. So to have he and his wife here from Georgia is a blessing. So she's going to come and just take us to that place in just a minute. Uh, so, But I won't have to get back up. Let me also uh, present this preacher. Uh, he is, man, uh, I was talking to Sister, Sister Hires this morning before we all gathered to come to church. I said, uh, you know, uh, he's younger than one of our sons. Uh, never caught that. Never, never, never caught that. I knew your age, but I never caught how, how young he was in the world because I look up to him as a mentor to me in the spiritual realm. God has had his hand on him, I think from the ages of seven and eight, maybe 10. He started preaching at age 10. Uh, this, is, this is God's preacher, uh, Overseer Sylvester Poole out of Montgomery. Uh, he's God's preacher, he's my friend, uh, but he's, the spokesman for this house today. So I'm just excited. I ask that you guys would just receive both of our guests, amen, as they come and as they operate in the things that God has called them to come and operate in. If you don't mind, come on, let's just stand and begin to clap our hands as worship begins with our very own, come on, Tanisha Toussaint. Come on, let's thank God for Let's thank God for Hallelujah. Come on, just continue to give him some kind of glory in this place. Come on, we're going to magnify him. We're going to lift him up. Hallelujah. Y'all just worship with us. Come on, every hand lifted, every voice uttering something unto God. Let him know that you appreciate him in this house. Up, hearts open wide is the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up, hearts open wide as we cry. Lord, we lift. Say we lift you high, we lift 
too high. Say hands up, hands up, hearts open. Wide as we cry, Lord, we lift your name. Lift your name. Lift it up again. Hands up, hands hearts open. Be ready to receive. the names oh, yeah. fade away oh, yeah. oh god let all the other names fade away until there's only you let all the other names fade away and jesus take your place yeah, yeah. jesus take your place say let all the other names let all God, but I 
say you
on and give him glory right there. Hallelujah. Can we bless him this morning? Come on, church. Come on, let's praise the name of our God. If you believe he's welcome in this place, then use your voice and your mouth to welcome him. Come on, it's enough of us in here that we ought to make more noise than that. If he's welcome in this place, then open your mouth and use your voice to welcome him. We welcome him. We welcome him. After all, this is his house. And since this is his house, he can do what he want to do, and he can do it however he wants to do it. And we bless him for the opportunity to be in his house. So really what should be happening is he ought to be welcoming us because it's his house. Uh, huh? I said it should, we should be being welcomed by him because it's his house. And he gives us the ground rules for his house. Here are the ground rules. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Come on, somebody don't know the ground rules. Let's go ahead and lay the ground rules. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. He says, I tell you why you ought to do it. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Now, if you're in his house, you should have followed the ground rules. So let's make sure we follow the ground rules and open our mouths and bless the name of our God because he's good, he's great, he's merciful, and we love him for being just who he is. We honor the Lord for this amazing day, for this amazing opportunity to stand before his people, how excited we are that God who does all things well so fit to bring us together again one more time. As we celebrate that, we also thank God for 23 years. Can we do that? Come on, CUC, let's praise God for 23 years being a part and being a force to be reckoned with in the kingdom. We celebrate you and we honor you and uh, it's because of churches like you um, that we are able to press and move forward. And we're excited about what you're doing. And uh, here is what we believe, that the best is yet to come. And we speak that and we declare that by faith. And we stand with you as your uh, sisters and brothers in Christ that God will continue to bless this great place. We celebrate not just 23 years of this church, but we also celebrate the set man of this house, the under shepherd of this place, my brother and my friend, Dr. Alfonso Hire Sr. Can you help me praise God for the leader that God has set in this place? And we're thanking God continually uh, continually for him. He is uh, my brother beloved and I'm thankful to God for um, the re relationship that God has uh, allowed us to develop over the years. I just got one bone to pick. Uh, I just got one bone to pick with, with so much brothers that uh, every Sunday when I get done with church, I jump on and I watch CUC's experience, right? Every Sunday, um, I'm putting a, a, a shameless plug because uh, if I'm in Montgomery and I'm watching it, then surely if you ain't here, you ought to be watching it too, just dropping that. Um, but every Sunday I watch, I watch. And for the last four Sundays, he's been talking about a black night, right? Yeah, last, thank you, for the last four Sundays, Think he hollering, the black knight is coming. You'll know who the black knight is because the black knight is coming. I said, okay. First Sunday, I said, that's strike one. Okay. And I got back on. Y'all know the black. I said, that's strike two. Now, you, you know, and for four Sundays, he kept talking about the black knight. I said, now, there's a problem because, because he ain't, he ain't. <laughs> He ain't too much lighter than I am. <laughs> and, uh, and so 
you know, if I'm black, white, night one, he got to be like black night one A, like right up in there, right along with me. <laughs> but we celebrate him again. Let's thank God for your leader and all of the leaders of this house, deacons, trustees, Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. We thank God for you. Of course, I love him, but I absolutely love Mama Alicia Hyers. Can you help me thank God for her? Uh, we make no bones about that. He knows if I got to choose who I'm going to choose, praise God for her and for her gentle spirit, her motherly care and love. We're thankful uh, for, for this day. It's been a great day. We celebrate your music ministry that has blessed us. And uh, then this woman of God, my goodness, what a gift to the body of Christ. We praise the Lord for you as well. My assignment is clear. I want to call your attention um, first to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, and verse number 35. And, uh, and then if you will indulge me, I want to look at just the A clause of Mark 5 and 1. So that's Mark 4 and 35, and just the A clause of, of Mark 5 and 1. They're not too far from each other. Mark chapter 4, 35, and chapter 5, verse number 1. If you make it to the New Testament, there is Matthew. And then there is Mark. Hey, if there's a struggle to find Matthew to make it to Mark, then CUC has Bible study every Wednesday at 6.30, 6.30. Mark chapter number four, I just love Jesus. And I'm glad he loves me. <laughs> Mark chapter 4, verse number 35. I'm the kind of preacher that likes for you to talk to me. If you're there, shout, I'm there. I'm there. I love it. Mark chapter 4, uh, verse number 35. And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, here it is, let us pass over to the other side. Mark chapter 5, verse number 1, just the A clause, will you? And they came over unto the other side of the sea. Thus ends our reading for today. The even was come. Jesus gives some instructions. Let us pass over. To the other side. Now here's the truth. A whole lot of stuff happened between verse 35 and verse 1 of Mark chapter 5. But in spite of what happened, God help me here, in between Mark 4 and 35 and Mark 5 and 1, in spite of what happens in between Mark 5 and 1, begins by announcing they came over onto the other side. I just want to, I just want to talk for a few moments, want to talk for a few moments from this place of thought. It's simple, it ain't even deep. Here it is, we made it. Do me a favor. I know we can't touch nobody. COVID is going on. But find somebody near you. Just look at them and scream it for me. Shout it. We made it. We. Come on. If you ain't been through nothing, then I understand why you said it in that tone of voice. But if you know between your, your verse 35 and your 5 and 1, you went through some hell and some high water, I need you to say it like you got the Holy Ghost. Just shout it. We made it. All right. We made it. Allow me, Dr. Hires, to begin with this powerful statement. Turbulence 
is the price we pay for transition. Okay. Let me say it again. Turbulence is the price we pay for transition. You can't transition without some turbulence. Because turbulence, God help me, is the price we pay for transition. Beloved, throughout scripture, the Lord is known for giving assignments, not revealing the middle, but promising the end throughout scripture. The Lord is known for telling you to do something, not revealing to you how difficult what you got to do is going to be, but telling you it's going to be all right. Let me try it again. Yeah. Throughout scripture, I said he is known for giving assignments, not revealing the middle, but promising the end. So he'll tell you to do it, not show you the turbulence that comes with it, but then assure that you're going to make it. Y'all ain't feeling me. Let's try it again. He'll tell you, Jeremiah, go give the word to the people, but not tell you that giving the word, they're going to laugh at you. They're going to scorn you. Come on. They're going to talk about you. They're going to mistreat you. They're going to alienate you. They're going to cast you out. You ain't going to really like them all the time, but Jeremiah, keep giving the word. They, they, they won't always receive it. They won't always hear you, but Jeremiah, just keep giving the word because God is known for giving assignments, not revealing the middle, but promising the end. Most of us are enthused about the beginning. We anticipate the end, but we hate the middle. The middle. The, the, the middle is the place after he said, let us pass over to the other side. The, the middle, the middle where you are too far from where you were to turn around. But turbulence is causing where you're headed to seem so far away. The, God, I wish I had help here. The middle, the middle, the, the, the middle. It is the place that doubt will always try to creep in. The middle, the middle, the middle. It is the place where you cry when everything bothers you. You worry when nothing seems to be falling in place. It's called the middle. It, it is the place where you know you are where God wants you to be, but it sure don't look like it. It is, God help me here. It is the place where being obedient starts costing you something because we have been tricked to think that obeying God comes without turbulence. But I believe I got at least five witnesses in the room, another 10 watching live, and I'll add the extra one that'll testify that obeying God is not always an easy thing to do. I, I need some CUC ice that have been around 20 plus years that'll testify obeying God. Help me preach here. It's not always, Brother Deacon, an easy thing to do because the enemy will always try to make you think that you're going under when God has told you to go over. Yeah. The enemy will always try and cause us to think that we're not going to make it. Thank you, Jesus. When God has already yeah, promised us that we are going to make it. But can I tell you, if we're going to make it, yeah, through this journey, if we're going to survive all of this turbulence, we got to stop thinking that just because God told us to do it, we won't have any problems. I need some real believers that know you ain't perfect, but 
you're doing the best you can. I need some real believers uh, that know you don't get it right all the time, but you show sure trying to do better today uh, than what you did. Where my worshipers at? I feel Holy Ghost now, mama, that will testify. It ain't that I dot all my I's and cross all my T's, uh, but God knows I'm doing the best that I can. Uh, and why does it seem <laughs> that doing the best I can uh, seems to bring so much turbulence? Uh, what's making me mad uh, is I didn't even ask to be here. Uh, you sent me into this water. Uh, I didn't ask to be in this water. Uh, I was comfortable on the shore. Uh, I went bothering nobody. Uh, I went bugging nobody. Uh, I was enjoying my own world. Uh, and deep, the only reason I'm here uh, is because Jesus, you said, uh, let us pass over uh, to the I could have been where I was, uh, enjoying my life, uh, enjoying what I had going on. Uh, but I feel Holy Ghost. Uh, but here I am, uh, not because I chose to be here, but you sent me here. And, and ever since I took off, feels like it's been problem after problem ever since I did it God I feel some here say since I did it it seems like it's been one thing after the other before you write this thing off can I give you some good news here is the good news if God started the beginning the end is already written <laughs> I wish you help yourself right there and give God glory that if God started that thing, watch this, the Bible instructs us that he won't start it without the end already being written because Isaiah 46 and 10 suggests he knows the end from, I wish I had somebody that'll testify the reason why I already know I'm going to make it is because I know how the story ends and it may get rough yeah and it may get tough and I may have to cry sometime and yes I may get lonely but if I could just hang on in there I wish you would encourage yourself lay your hands on yourself yes Lord and say hang on in there hang yes Lord hang on in there because the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong but to the one that endure until the end so rough and rugged we gonna make it ups and downs but we gonna make it good days and bad days but we gonna make it sometimes you feel like a nut sometimes you don't but we gonna make it don't always get along but we gonna make it don't always understand each other's perspective but we gonna come, come on I'm talking to the body of Christ now don't, don't always see it the same way but we gonna make it he's brought us 23 years we got to make it come on he's kept us through the stuff as a matter of fact if we weren't gonna make it we would have died in what could have taken us out but the mere fact I feel some you better push but the mere fact that you're able to stand yes God on this Sunday in September and said thank God for 23 years it ought to be a testament that what the devil tried did not work so I'm gonna give you five seconds to get some Holy Ghost in your heart and open your mouth and just shout I'm gonna make it you don't know half of the stuff I go through you don't know what it takes to be me on the average day that's why you shouldn't judge my worship because most days it take everything I got just to get out the bed most days I have to talk myself to a better place don't always feel like it but most days I got to be like the little engine that could I wake up saying I think I can I think I can I think I can yes Lord I think anybody ever been there and the more you talk yourself good all of a sudden your language change and you start saying I know I can I know I know I can don't know what today holds but I know who holds today I'm there now Al and it is with that thought I gotta get there that I want to examine the story text set before us Jesus and his disciples, God help me, 
are on a boat. And uh, Jesus has just given, given some orders. <laughs> Here are the orders. You good where you are, but there's work on the other side. It ain't that there's nothing wrong with where you are. But I got something for you to do on the other side. Okay. All right. Let us, us, let us, let, let us, God help me, let us pass over to, to the other side. Um, because the assignment that you are about to embark upon is going to require you not to journey alone. So let us, let us pass over, God help me here, <laughs> to the other side. Because where you're going, you're going to need my assistance. So let us pass over to the other side. You know, there are some scriptures where he sent them along and then he came along later. That wasn't this kind of assignment. Jesus said, you're going to really need me for this one. So let us pass over to the other side. Side. What I really am trying to tell you, you're missing your shout cue, is you really ought to be glad that what he sent you in, he didn't send you in by his, yourself, but he came along with you. As a matter of fact, I would suggest to you, that's how you know you made it. The reason why you made it is because you didn't go through it by yourself. Y'all ain't feeling me. Come here, David. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me <sighs> he gives orders but he didn't tell me that it was going to be like this gave orders but he didn't tell me preacher it would hurt like this he gave orders but he did not tell me people treat you like this he gave orders but he didn't tell me people could be nasty like this You didn't, and you didn't tell me that assignment would get scary like this. Can I ask you a question and I'm going to get where I'm going? Could it be what's frustrating you is the fact that you are where he told you to be? <laughs> to deal with a storm how in the world yes lord did obeying god get me in this mess right here how how in the world did obeying god get me on this job i mean i put the application in because he told me to how in the world did obeying god get me with this ministry i mean he got me working in a ministry with people that don't even speak to me how in the world did obeying god get me to this place i mean he got me in a place i, I wish i had help here where i'm just being tolerated how in the world did obeying god get me to a place where my money funny my change is strange how in the world did obeying god get me to the point where my family going crazy how in the world did obeying god get me to the point where my children act like they don't know how to act how in the world did obeying god And I had to learn that attack is always attached to assignment. I'm gonna say that again. I'm coming around the mountain here. I come. Attack is always attached to assignment. You don't believe me. 
the same prophet I mentioned earlier, Jeremiah, learned that he had to be attacked. Hear what was messed up, D. Can I tell you what was messed up? When it's assignment, you can't quit if you want to. Okay, now I'm going to find out the real saints in here now. I'm looking for the believer that though you have not quit, you can be honest and say, I at least thought about it. I at least thought. Come on, don't make me feel like I'm by myself. I'm on live. I don't want to feel like I'm by myself. Anybody besides me that will testify, I ain't cuss nobody out, but I at least... <laughs> I at least thought about it. I, I ain't saying nothing crazy, but it ain't because I don't know how to make my subject and verbs agree. I at least thought about it. And here I am obeying God. And what's frustrating me is I cannot quit. Jeremiah said it got so good to me that every time I said I was going to quit, and every time I said I was going to walk away, I felt a fire. God help me here. Shut up in my bones. Is there anybody in this room? Room, or watching this live that can attest you know what that feels like you done left a many days saying I ain't going back I ain't dealing with it it ain't worth it I don't want to be around it but every time you walk away God puts your destiny in your GPS and you find yourself back at the same place you said you were never going back to again So let us examine the text. Oh, God, I got to go. That is set before us. Though we've only read two verses, I submit to you, there's so much sandwiched in between those verses that I believe it'll get us where we're going. The assignment has been given. Let us pass over to the other side. Storm comes, hires. Mama Alicia, a storm, a storm comes. And, uh, and, and here's what messed me up. The text called it a great storm. Um, it's a great storm of winds. And, uh, and then it says, and then the waves beat into the ship. It's, it's a great storm. It's a wind storm. Waves are beating to the ship. And now the ship is being filled with what it was built to sail through. Okay. The ship is being filled with the very stuff it was built to sail through because, because it's, a, it's a great storm. Uh, most of the time when we look at this text, if y'all would give me a moment uh, just to use, if you will, what God gave me through revelation to help us in the room. Most of the time when we look at this text, God help me here, we love to go to the characters in the text. We love to go to the characters in the text. Most of the time when we look at the text, we love to go to, uh, go to the characters in the text, i.e., we love to talk about either Jesus is asleep, yeah, and we love to talk about the disciples that cried out. I love that too. We're going to get there before I'm done, but can I tell you, before I get to the characters, there was an object that started talking to me from the text, and the object sent me to see you see on your 23rd year anniversary to tell you how you're going to make it. The object is the ship, if you will. The object is the ship, and the ship told me to speak on its behalf. If you would just hear what the ship has, God help me, if you would just hear what the ship has to say, the ship told me to announce, uh, to tell CUC that if you're going to make it, watch this, uh, you got to learn learn how to take a beating without being broken. Yeah, God help me here. I need about five folk that know you feel like that ship sometime. The waves are beating you and life is beating you and ministry is beating you and your job is beating you. But the ship said, pay attention, Pooh. I took a beating because the text says the waves beat into the ship. He says, but watch me. I kept on sailing and I came to announce to somebody that and yes, you've been in a beating, but I dare you to lay your hands on yourself with your Holy Ghost self and just shout, I got to keep on sailing. I got to, y'all ain't saying it with no Holy Ghost. I said, I know you've been dealing with it. Folk can't even tell you've been dealing with it because the Lord done let you smile, Mama Alicia, even when hell was breaking loose. He's giving you that kind of anointing that you can work.
worship do anything. So you don't even look like what you've been through. But though you have taken a beating, aren't you glad not one piece of the ship fell apart? Not one piece of the ship came off? Not one piece of the ship, y'all ain't helping me. Not one piece of the ship collapsed. And I'm talking to you. And just like that ship, out of all you've been through, not one piece of you fell apart. You still got your mind. You still got your joy. You still got your peace. You woke up this morning saying, I don't know what they going to do at CUC, but this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take her. Is there anybody up in here that'll testify? I've taken a beating, but I am not broken. I ain't broken. I'm still sailing. I got to go after 23 years, after 23 years, still sailing, waves beating, but still sailing. Yeah, turbulence, but still sailing. Ship says, speak on my behalf, will you? If you're going to make it, you got to learn how to take a beating without being broken. Here's what messed me up. Here's what messed me up, Deke. After the ship says, that's my testimony. The next verse says, and Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship asleep. He's asleep while the ship is taking a beating. Yeah, he's asleep. And now water is in the ship, but, but, but Jesus doesn't wake up to the water in the ship. Jesus, God help me, is still asleep even though the ship is taking a beating. Jesus would then say to me, thank you, ship, for your testimony. But here is my testimony. If you're going to make it, don't allow what goes on along the journey to affect you through the journey. I said, Jesus, you got to help me with that. He says, well, that may be a little too deep for some. So here's another way to say it, Pooh. He says, tell them some stuff you got to learn how to sleep through. I wish I had about five witnesses here that will testify the reason why you made it is because when turbulence was going on around you, you didn't allow the turbulence to affect within you. And so there you were. People were waiting on you. Why she ain't lost her mind yet? Why she ain't fell apart yet? Why is she still praising like that? We know what's going on. Why is she coming to church every Sunday? We know what's going on. Why he acting like he ain't going through nothing? and what they don't understand and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep, shall guard, shall protect shall, sh God help me shall shelter your mind through Christ Jesus so that means he'll make you have joy in a season life say you ought to have sorrow he'll make you praise him I wish I had help here when things look like it's falling apart so I came to announce I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall I wish you would look around don't touch them look around and just tell them it ain't gonna affect me it ain't gonna <laughs> just tell them for me it ain't gonna affect me do what you want it ain't gonna affect me read what you want to read it ain't gonna affect me handle how you want to handle it will not affect you're gonna make it you're going to make it. Jesus says, Jesus said, okay, that's my, that's, that's my testimony. Pooh, just tell them, you got to sleep through some stuff. <laughs> I would announce, I'm out of time, man. I would announce if I had time. I would announce if I had time that deep if you sleep and you sleep right, by the time you wake up, it'll be over. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. But I need about five people. I feel the Holy Ghost so strong right here. I need about five people that'll testify. You know what it feels like to be in those real bad storms? I'm talking about it to knock some leaves down and, and trees all in the yard and, and debris everywhere. And you wake up and look out the window huh, and say, when in the world did all of that happen? Huh? That's because he gave you the strength. God, I need about five.
my folk, I'm about to tell this thing uh, that'll testify I'm going to sleep through it. You, you may be throwing stuff all over the place, uh, but I'm going to sleep through I'm going to get the best sleep I ever got tonight because he that keepeth Israel uh, neither slumbers nor sleep. Uh, and the announcement is uh, if he going to stay up, uh, then I might as well go to... I got to go, man. Jesus said, Jesus said, I submit to you part A of my testimony. He said, I'm going to talk a little later, but I submit to you part A of my testimony. Thank you, ship. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else got anything to say? <laughs> the disciples said, y'all ain't going to like us, but here is our testimony. you you ain't going to like it, but, but here's my testimony. The disciples say, oh, oh, most people ridicule us for this, but, but if you're going to make it, when your faith gets weak, cry for help. <laughs> I know, I know, because we've been taught all of our lives, yeah, just to beat the disciples up for having little faith. But I'm looking at a few of us, a few of us, a few of us in here that are testify there have been some season in our lives when our faith got weak. Okay, y'all gonna act like that. Y'all gonna treat me in that tone of voice. Don't you dare sit here with that kind of call to act like you always strong, like you always got the faith for it. And there's some times in my life uh, where I have to cry out for help because uh, I ain't got the faith necessary, yes, Lord, to get me through it. Uh, so if I'm gonna make it, uh, my faith get weak, uh, we cry for help. Look at somebody, tell them I know what it feels like uh, to have to cry for help. Uh, I was a baby in the faith. I didn't know all this go on. And so I had to cry for help. Do you care? Act like you don't see us going through all this. Don't act like you don't see me. By my tongue. Huh. Or act like them. You don't see them testing my gangster. And I'm a man and I'm a believer. But there's a side of me. I, I, I need to know you care. Because if I don't find out preacher, he care real soon. My weak faith will make me take matters into my own hands. I need, God, I need somebody here. Don't make me feel like I'm by myself. You ever been in that place in your life where you really needed to know the Lord cares? Because God, if you don't care, I know how to make something happen. It may not be the right thing, but I do know how to make something happen. I need to know you care. <laughs> I need somebody in this room that'll testify you've had to cry for help when things were falling apart. Cry for help when the waves were beating and water was filling the ship. Cry for help. Do All I want to know is do you care? I'm out of time. Because if I know you care, I can hang on in there. Jesus, get up. Do you? Do you care? And the Bible says, Jesus gets up. I'm done, church. <laughs> Rebukes the wind. Yeah. Said something to the sea. <laughs> yeah. And everything start obeying. <laughs> he, he gets up and he starts talking to nature. He gets up. And he starts talking to things that are out of their control. Huh? You see, because if it's in your control, you don't need him. You need him when it's out of your control. <laughs> when it's too big for your pay grade, he said, now, you ain't proven you can talk to wind and waves yet, but let me show you, I can even handle what you can't handle. 
Oh my God. I can even handle what you can, I can deal with what you cannot. Can I ask you a real good question? Has he ever dealt with some stuff that was too big for you? That, that's what I came to find out. Has he ever worked some stuff out for you that you could not, that problem that I had? Yeah. I just couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried, but I kept getting deeper involved. But when I turned it over to Jesus, yeah, and I stopped worrying about it, I gave it over to the Lord. And what did he do? So here's the final testimony. Hires and man, thank you for inviting me. Here's the final testimony. Jesus said, I got something to say. I, I told you, don't allow what goes on along the journey to affect you through the journey. Disciples told you that when your faith gets weak, cry for help. And the ship told you, learn how to take a beating without being broken. Here's the last thing, and we can go home. When you don't know what to say, let the Lord do the talking. <laughs> okay, maybe it ain't never got that bad for you. But man, I've been through some stuff that I couldn't find the right words to say. And then I remembered this scripture that said Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Ah! And the text says, and he's making intercession. intercession. <laughs> it literally suggests he's speaking on my behalf. And I came to tell somebody in this room, if you're going to make it, sometimes, preacher, you got to let the Lord speak on your behalf. I need about five witnesses that'll testify. I don't always know what to say. And if I tell the truth, I don't always know how to say it. But thank God I got a Jesus that'll speak on my behalf. I would have still been in that storm. I would have still been in that mess. I would have still been going through that but Jesus started talking and when Jesus started talking the Bible says God I feel Holy Ghost here he rebuked the wind and when Jesus started talking the Bible says he says to the waves peace be still is there anybody that's crazy enough to believe that he can talk you to a peaceful place I wish you would find somebody and just look at him and say, neighbor, when things got rough, Jesus, oh Lord, talk me to a peaceful place. When things, when things got difficult for me, Jesus, yeah, Lord, talk me to a peaceful place. I thought I was going to lose it. I thought I was going to give up. But I heard Jesus say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. I thought I was going to lose my mind. But I heard Jesus say, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, y'all ain't helping me, will us out of them all. What does that mean? That means when Jesus talks, the only thing he can speak, mama, is his word. And the way you're going to make it is you need the word of God. After 23 years, I want to know how you made it through many dangers. Y'all got to help me get out of here. Toils and snares. I've all come. It was grace that brought us safe thus far. And grace will. Now here's what we're going to do. And then we're going to go to the after party. I need somebody to stand on their feet and look across the aisles and say we going to make it. Y'all ain't talking. I said look across. As a matter of fact, look around the room and just start opening your mouth and just tell them we're going to make it. I understand.
understand. I said, tell them we going to make it because death and life is it y'all don't stop. Just keep telling somebody because the more you say it, the more you'll believe it. We're going to make it sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes weary, but I got a sneaky suspicion that everything is going be all right. You gonna make it? Come on, see you. See your hands are lifted. We gonna make it. Oh my God! Come on, we gonna make it. And after all they went through, think you get to chapter five, verse one, and they arrived to the other side. I know, I know you. We don't always see it in the storm. But, but I dare you, I dare you just to tell yourself, I'm gonna make it to the other side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it to the other side. Because no matter what I lost, I still got me. I still got Jesus. And you still here. Come on. Jesus plus you plus the right people can help you survive in this storm. Okay, I'm about to pray. But what if, what if the turbulent transition had to shake some stuff? What if? Think, what if you were rolling with people you couldn't trust in the storm? And pandemic reveals what's really essential. So stuff that you thought you couldn't live without starts falling off. And it proves, I feel Holy Ghost, I gotta go. And it proves to be unpredictable and it proves to be untrustworthy and it proves that you can't count on it. And now that you're in the middle of the storm, rather than crying about what you lost, you ought to be thanking God for what you lost because it would have killed you in the storm, come on. But now that you got the right stuff, come on, and you got the right people and you know Jesus is in the boat, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds not to praise him for what he gave you but to praise him for what he let you lost because now you know come on I'm giving you 10 you ain't used but two of them you got eight more to open for the stuff that you lost for every mountain you brought me over for every bless yeah you brought me to for every blessing I say hallelujah Mm. The person next to you don't even know what you've been through, but look at them and tell them you're next to a miracle. You're next to, come on, I'm gone. I'm about to pray. I say, you better open your mouth and tell them you're sitting next to a miracle. Come on, tell them like you got the Holy Ghost. You sit next to a, if you knew half of the stuff I've been through, you wonder why I praise the way I pray. If you knew half of the stuff that I survive on there, you wonder why I shout the way I shout. If you knew half of the, you're sitting next to a miracle. And for this, I give you praise. How's I got to go? But for the one of you in here that has been dealing with a private storm, yeah, uh, that one that tries to act like you got it all together. Yeah, I'm talking to you. When if the truth be told, you really feel like you about to fall apart. And people have been telling you, you know, church lingo will tell you to pretend 
But if you be honest, you really need some help. Because this thing is tearing you apart. And yes, you come to church, but, but you're really wrestling with some stuff. I'm, uh, I feel the Holy Ghost. And yes, you're in worship, but you're really battling some serious storms in your life. <laughs> And can I tell you what's really getting you? I'm talking to you and you know I'm talking to you. What's really getting you is you can always find the words for other people. But you can't find the words to encourage yourself. And what's making it even worse is won't nobody even ask, are you okay? Because... The strongest ones are often the most overlooked. It's you I want to pray for. Got to come to no altar. You ain't even got to let nobody know it's you. Because this moment is between you and God. But right where you are, if that is you, can you take a moment with the sincerity of your worship and open your mouth that he didn't let you die when you could have lost your mind. Can you do that? Come on, if it ain't for you, you ain't gotta say nothing. But for the person or persons in this room that know you have been at the door of losing your complete mind. You thought you were gonna lose your mind. Can you just take a moment? I'm talking to you. You trying to figure out how I know what's going on with you. I'm trying to get you delivered. If you would open your mouth and just begin to worship God, God, that when the devil tried to kill you when you were losing it God kept your mind he kept your body and he didn't let you go under so father in Jesus name in Jesus name oh I feel the presence in Jesus name we did not come to complain about a storm what we did come to do was tell you thank you thank you God that you kept us through it all thank you God that you held us together thank you God that we may have lost some stuff but we still got our mind thank you God that you held us intact thank you thank you that by faith we declare we're going to make it thank you <sighs> that we've taken a beating but we weren't broken so for the rest of our days we give you glory for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever can you open your mouth pastor is coming now can you open your mouth and praise God if you know without a doubt you are gonna make it come on I need you see you see I need you to praise him like you know it's already all right I need you to praise him like you know he already worked it out <laughs> <laughs>